When you spend your money, you want to make sure you're getting incredible results for as little work as possible. These guys are rich, single pigment colours in 48 hues that you can run straight through an airbrush. F*** yes. I've been using these as one of my main go-to paints for over 18 months now. And in this video, I want to show them off a little bit. And also to tell you about some of the places where they don't quite work as well. If the name Golden sounds familiar to you, you may have seen them here. Or here. Or here. Or perhaps you saw them with the launch of the recent SoFlat range. But don't get blasé, not all paints are made the same, and Gold and High Flow are nothing like that. High Flow acrylics are an ultra-thin paint with ink light consistently providing incredible results. They can go directly from bottle to airbrush, refillable marker or dip pen, and work great for drawing, staining, dripping, pouring, calligraphy, and colour washes. I can absolutely confirm they work well in marker pens, and you can even paint minis with your markers. And if you want to watch that car crash of a video, make sure you're subscribed. But most of the time, I would use these as I would do with inks, to dilute the paint for maximum ink intensity, <laughs> or straight out of the pot, into an airbrush for priming and shading, before moving on to more traditional paints for the later steps. But let's be honest, who doesn't love collecting paints? A quick shout out to Golden here. I'm not sponsored, yet, but they're a US company based in New York State, which is entirely employee owned. They've got a badass range of acrylic paints, as well as oils and watercolours too. They run an amazing blog called JustPaint.org, which is chock full of useful information, and they have a pretty neat podcast too. Generally speaking, they seem like a company that knows its audience really well. I've got links to some of their other products down below. First up, my set of 10 30ml high flow acrylics cost me £35 from Amazon, which works out at £3.50 a pot. Compare that to other products that behave similarly, like Daler and Rowney inks, which are about £25 for a set of six paints, again 30 millilitres, which works at about £4.16 a pot, or contrast paints, which are 18 mil pots and cost around £4.3 and p each. For me, the golden paints are incredible value, but that doesn't mean they're lower quality. They use the same high quality pigments that Golden used through their entire range. In the minis game, Citadel are always going to be easier to find. That's not because there aren't loads of Golden stockists, there are, but because we don't generally frequent art shops maybe as much as we should do, and you should. They're really good fun. But as ever, if you're willing to hunt about online, you can find these paints easily enough, and it's worth doing so. So my typical workflow is to grab a paint and shake it, there's a ball bearing already inside. It's really important to make sure the lid is screwed shut when you do this. I've done this a couple of times now and it's almost been a disaster both times. If you do get paint everywhere, be quick and you can wipe it off hard surfaces. Your clothes are f though. Once it's shaken, add it to your airbrush and spray. It dries glossy, which is an odd thing to see in mini paints these days. Most paints are matte or satin. It's not a real issue. In fact, sometimes it can be helpful if you're painting reflective surfaces, such as metals or anything that's wet. Just snap a quick photo before you paint your next layers and then you can refer back to that all the way through your paint job to make sure you're on the right track. And of course, adding in different textures and finishes can help to make your minis more interesting anyway. If you're still watching, you likely don't mind helping me out by liking this video and maybe dropping a comment down below. It helps to let YouTube know that this video is a good one. Thanks. For the base coats, I apply this stuff neat, but when I'm applying shades and filters, I'll thin it down. Golden say use water to thin, but don't use more than 20% or the pigments and binders will start to break down. I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to lay out four different types of red paint. A heavy body, a citadel, Mephist on red, a Dela and Rowney ink, and a golden high flow. First I'm just going to extend those neat, just to show you how far they can spread out. You can see particularly with the Citadel paints, you start to get some texture as you spread them out further, and that's really obvious, obviously, with the heavy body, because they're much thicker paints. Next, we'll add some water, and keep an eye out for that break point. That's the point where the paint starts to lose its intensity. It's more obvious with things like the Mephiston Red. See it? Inks are much more susceptible to this, because they're obviously thinner in nature, which means there's less holding them together. And there it is again. You can see very quickly you start to lose that intensity in the pigment. Okay, so what can you do about that? What I usually do is thin my paint using Golden High Flow. Okay, so I'm going to lay a little bit more paint. Then I'm going to add my High Flow acrylic to it and watch that extend out. By not using water, 
you are keeping that pigment intensity so your paint can go a lot further. Try again. And we've essentially doubled how far that paint can spread. Let's try with the Citadel. Add it in. And it just goes and goes and goes. Neat, right? To show you what I mean in a real situation, this is just a spare metal I've got knocking around. This is high flow acrylics. This is Citadel Mephiston Red. And just for a bit of comparison, this is Flesh Terrors Red Contrast Paint. And just to show you the finished thing on a model, here's High Flow Acrylics, here's Mephiston Red, and here's Contrast Paint. Learning this was a real game changer for me. Crazy intense colours, no tide marks. You can use any highly concentrated, thin paints or inks to do this. Like contrast paints, for example. From a cost point of view though, golden my absolute go-to. But honestly, whatever works for you. If you're like me, you may be wondering what the difference between an ink and a paint is. And the answer is both really simple and really complicated too. The best I could come up with are there are basically two types of inks. There are dye-based inks, which are dissolved in solvents, like water or alcohol, and they're mainly used in pens, so they're not relevant to us. Or there are pigment-based inks, which are suspended in a medium. The main difference between acrylic paint and acrylic ink is the viscosity, i.e. how thick it is, which is why they work really well for airbrushes, but cost a lot more, because the pigment is the expensive bit. There's loads more to this subject, and you should definitely look it up. I've put some links down below. But you didn't come here to hear me waffle about pigments, you came to hear about high flow acrylics. So let's go. Like all paints, or inks, the transparency will vary from pigment to pigment. But on the pots, you can get a quick sense of what you're dealing with. Golden do a handy black and white guide, which is then painted over to show how the paints perform, as well as the usual guides to transparency and light fastness. You see these on all art grade paints. They also list the pigments too, so at all points you know exactly what you're dealing with. Nice. So when I'm painting a model, I will usually use Golden High Flow to prime with. Yes, there are better primers out there, but it's convenient. And with these, I can usually choose the right colour from the get-go. In this case, Thalo Green. It saves a step and makes no difference to the final paint job at all. Then it's all about the layers. Now at this point, I usually switch to my beloved Chimera paints, but I can still use my Golden paints to extend them if I need to. If I wanted to continue with the High Flow acrylics, I could. They're signal pigment paints, so mixing them is a simple process and you get highly saturated pigments out as a result. Honestly though, I wouldn't. And the reason is something we've already alluded to, their finish. They are glossy. Now there's a time and a place for gloss surfaces. If you're painting anything wet or shiny, great. But most surfaces will look better matte or satin. If you like, you can use mediums to control the finish of the paint. By adding matte medium to a glossy paint, you end up with a paint that's slightly more matte than it was before. Similarly, you can apply a matte varnish over the top of at the end of your paint job and it'll do roughly the same job. But in my mind, I would just use the right paint for the right job. Gloss paint plus a matte medium gives a satin finish. Golden high flow acrylics. Great value, high quality, ink-like paints, which have some really interesting properties to level up your painting. Are they a magic bullet? No, but they are a cool add-on to your toolkit. If you want to see something a bit more fun with high flow acrylics, you can also use them to make markers, and that's what I did when I coloured in this Spartan tank. Check it out here. Thanks for watching. See you later.